Let's look at the effect of feedback on amplifier input impedances. Before we begin this derivation, I should mention that this is really only approximately exactly what happens because we're making assumptions of an ideal feedback network. Notice that in this series input configuration we have a zero Thevenin resistance for this feedback network, beta XO. So with that little caveat let's look and see what would happen in a situation where we have something nice like this. If we notice in our original amplifier there's an input resistance Ri. That input resistance is equal to the input voltage Vi divided by the input cur current Ii. What we're after is the input resistance after applying feedback which means with all this stuff in place. In that case the input resistance after feedback, it's Vs divided by Ii. Because notice that Ii is the current that's going through Vs here. So, rewriting Vs using Kirchhoff's voltage law around this loop right here, you notice that Vs is equal to Vi plus beta x out. And x out is equal to A times Vi. So we put, plug that in right here. Now we can factor out the Vi on the top and the Ii on the bottom, ending up with this expression down here. And noticing that Vi over Ii is equal to the input resistance from the original circuit, we have the input resistance after feedback is equal to the input resistance before feedback times this quantity 1 plus beta A. That's the same quantity that the gain was turned down by. And our little man here is so happy. He's shouting yes because for a voltage input amplifier such as we have here Ideally, the input resistance would be infinity. So as you see here, the input resistance was improved by a factor of 1 plus beta A. Notice that this works for any series input, any voltage input amplifier. It doesn't matter whether the output was voltage or current. Let's go look at an input that's made for current. This would be a parallel type feedback amplifier. Here, we're also making a similar assumption of an ideal beta network, where the Norton resistance here is infinite. I find it more convenient to use conductances in this case. The conductance of the original amplifier is 1 over Ri, which is also equal to Ii divided by the original voltage across the input um, amplifier, which is right here. It's the same as the input voltage over here because they're in parallel. So <clears throat> let's look and see what the, the conductance after feedback will be. It's 1 over R sub IF, where R sub IF is the resistance after feedback. That would be the IS divided by the VI, because you see IS is the current going in here, and VI is the voltage across that current source right there. So, <clears throat> using Kirchhoff current law at this node right here, you can see that IS is equal to II plus IF, and IF is equal to beta, times x out right here. And <clears throat> x out right here can be computed from ii times a should give me x out. So when I put plug in the a times ii for the x out I end up with this expression here which allows me to factor ii over vi out 
And noticing that ii over vi is equal to the input conductance before feedback, or 1 over ri, notice that that's multiplied by this factor, the same factor, 1 plus beta a. So the conductance got bigger by a factor of 1 plus beta a, or the resistance got smaller by a factor of 1 plus beta a. And in this case, our happy man over here is also excited, saying, yes, that's just what we wanted.